senior football post primary schools D final. Uh, Ulster and du- Ulster champions Skullwera Buncrana taking on Leinster champions Gallen Community School of Forban. Throw in is at 2 pm. Earlier this week, both schools uh, visited Croke Park in Dublin for the preview of this weekend's All Ireland Senior Finals, and uh, we spoke to both schools, starting with the representatives of Gallen Community School. I suppose the uh, build up to these kind of games within the school is always a special time. Uh, tell us a bit about the journey so far, I suppose, in the competition. Yeah, I suppose it's kind of been a it's kind of a long kind of process, you know. The you know first we came through the the North Leinster, um, uh, which was you know very competitive, um, and then we went on and uh, won won the Leinster. Um, so yeah, the journey seems to be you know going on a long time, which is I suppose good for the lads and that as well. We're we're out of class, we're we're gelling together over the last couple of couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, so lots it's it's, it's probably it seems a long journey, but a very enjoyable journey. Um, uh, tell us a bit about the balls within the school, I suppose, and, and how you've managed to enjoy it while at the same time stay a bit detached and focused on the on the on the task at hand. Yeah, I suppose there's great balls around the school, like the teachers, principal. Sometimes they're nearly more excited than the players. The way it's it's going on, but like it's great for the players. It's going to help drive us on in the final, you know. But have to try and keep our heads as well, you know. Don't want to get too excited or too nervous about the match. Yeah, um, I suppose. Look. Was there any point along the journey with this group that clicked or where you just saw or thought that, yeah, look, these lads are looking like they could make a run at this? Yeah. Um, well, look, we, we kind of know the kind of the, the core group of players we're after having for the last couple of years. Um, we were beaten two years ago in an All-Ireland semi-final. Um, so I suppose this has been kind of a, you know, hasn't been a, a one-year kind of a journey. It's probably over the last two or three years. Um, so, yeah, we've kind of looked at the lads. We've kind of, we keep to, a, you know, our attacking system. We want to try and play a, a positive game of football. Um, so yeah, I suppose the whole cliche, we took it game by game, but obviously our target was um, to win a Leinster um, and now we're, we're in bonus territory and when we're here, we're going we're gonna to try and win the All-Ireland. I suppose there's very few schools with something to play for at this end of the season. It's a special place to be when you have such a big game to look forward to. Absolutely, yeah. Like, it's obviously it's our first time being in an All-Ireland final, so it's all new to us, but we're going to take it step by step and hopefully we go over the line. Uh, and Bunkrana, uh, the opposition in the final, Donegal side, should be a good game of football. Definitely, yeah. Just look, we're going to stay going the way we are and play our attacking football and hopefully we'll come out on top of the day. Finally for yourself, I suppose, look, the, 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 the final imparting message on this group as they leave uh, to take the field at the weekend. Ah, oh, just, just, just enjoy it, do you know what I mean? These days don't come around too often. Um, do you know why I played in All-Ireland final myself? 1-1 um, in Gallon Community School. Um, and last one, you know, and they're they're the, they're the best playing days uh, I've had, you know, in the jersey. So you know, just cherish it and play the game, and not the occasion. You know, that's my message. The boys in the school in the lead up to such a, a big day. What's it been like? Uh, it's kind of different. Uh, we kind of more of a soccer school, so it's a big change to kind of be hearing about Gaelic around the school. Uh, it's the furthest school has ever got, so kind of a big day everyone's excited for. It's kind of something new. Uh, as a coach, I suppose, how have you noticed the team progressed in the campaign so far? Yeah, well, look, we're quite fortunate that there's been great work done with clubs up there now, showing and you know, great credit must go to Bunkrana, Muff, and the Burke Club. Um, you know, without them kind of putting in the work at underage and at grassroots levels, we wouldn't have the caliber players to work with. So. Yeah, um, look, a lot of the credit has to go to them. And over the course of the year, the team's really progressed. You know, in comparison to other years, the boys put on a massive shift. You know, training before school, training after schools, giving up a lot of free time, doing gym work. And so, and then, look, we're fortunate enough to have Kieran Thompson this year, Donegal County player. Um, uh, and he's brought a wealth of experience with, you know, the technical setup for the side and stuff. So, yeah, it progressed nicely over the course of the year. Uh, and uh, coming out of Ulster? Tough, yeah. Um, the Mount Ulster is always going to be tough. Um, a lot of tough games, you know, one in games by a point or two, and coming from behind a couple of games, built a lot of character within the team, and you know the boys should get resilience to go over that. So you know, as well as you know the football in the belt, there's a bit of um, there's a bit of personality and a bit of an attitude being built as well within them. Yeah, just to pick on that point about the 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 the, the personality and the attitude that builds within a squad as they progress in a competition like that. How have you, as a player, felt that build and grow? Um. Well, kind of leading up to this any year before, school Gaelic is nearly 
kind of you hear them at the game on Wednesday. Um, you just show up, you play for a bit of crack. Um, we got the Donegal final at the start of the year this year. Um, we got beat in the final, and Mr. Campbell kind of said for us to kind of take a look at ourselves. And we nearly had two options: we could keep going the way we were going, and or he offered us a gym session the next morning, seven o'clock. I think there was about thirty boys down there straight away, and it's just kind of been building since that. I suppose yeah, days, days, and things like that can set the tone in a squad. Yeah, look, it was um, you know Gidor beat us and beat us in last year's Ulster final and they beat us in the Queen to B final this year and you know on the day we kicked one twenty one and we still got beat so you know to go out and kick one twenty one in the game of Gaelic and get beat it's it's um, it's kind of unheard of um, we identified early on the season that there was a team there to go somewhere um, so look I asked the question to the boys I says look do you want to be remembered as kind of you know nearly men on a Gaelic team or do you want to go and do something about this like and fair play to them but they shoulder the wheel. Um, I called them out for gym session next morning, seven o'clock, and look, they all they all turned up, and you know, anything I've asked of them over the course of the year, they've always put the shoulder of the wheel, and they're always willing to come on board and you know do the wee extra things outside of what we do in school. For Ben, uh, awfully side in the final, <coughs> this is to be a tough game. Yeah, um, it's well hard to know kind of with school football, and when you're coming from different provinces, like it's really hard to kind of tell where teams are at or how to convey yourself. But obviously, if then an Ireland final, it's going to be no easy game. Like it's going to be a tough one but we're kind of just more focusing on ourselves trying to prepare the best we can we probably felt kind of came into the semi-final a wee bit naive of how big of a game it was and kind of the pressure got us a wee bit and luckily we still got over the line but I think now the final is just kind of going out and focusing on ourselves and doing the best we can that parting mess- message I suppose that you'll be giving to these lads going out into the field what's the key thing for them yeah it's like look we're just going to <clears throat> look for a performance um, Sean Lidda there, we had a very tight semi-final um, and I said to the boys look, that today will define you as a man, what kind of man you are and look, we were really up against it, really hostile conditions and the boys had a lot of character that day to get over the line and you know they probably had experienced a hostility that they never had experienced before so they really kind of came to the fore and after the match I said look boys, we're in the final now, to me you don't need to have a medal in your back pocket to be a man, you know you showed there the day what kind of people you are and, Look, it's great to win all these finals, but uh, you know I don't think it's going to be a defining moment in these boys' careers because a lot of them have got a bright, bright future and in terms of their Gaelic career. And we're back here at Markovic Park. Gorgeous conditions here. Couldn't hope for better on the second weekend in March. Uh, delighted to bring in with me here Gary Duffy. Gary, of course, you couldn't bring more local knowledge to this particular setup. You've worked with a lot of these lads, these Bunkrana lads before. So, uh, look, we're, we're levelling my awfully influence here. We'll try and balance it up between us. Uh, so, I'll let you kick it off there. Talk to me about this Bunkrana side. Huge year for them. Not a strong track record in Ulster Schools football, but breaking new ground. No, absolutely. Skull where a bun bun would have been wouldn't be a stronghold within the GA though, over the last number of years. They would have been part of the Malgal made of schools and any show that we tried within the um, McLaren Cup and the Fast Cups throughout the years. But the standalone competition give also a good opportunity as clubs to invest in the school and support schools and their journey. So we're delighted that th- this team is made up of three clubs only, my own club, Bunkrana, Deep, Padraig, Iskaheen, Muff and Burt. So so the, so the three clubs are um, very much prominent on it. You've one or two, maybe other clubs feeding into it, but th- today's team is made up of the th- three local clubs in the Minnesota area. Absolutely. Well, the Gallon Community School, similarly, it's uh, a very, very rural area. Would they talk about rural depopulation? Well, West Offaly, my homeland, has been affected <laughs> in a big way. Uh, for Ban, the dominant club, but uh, other clubs, it's uh, listed, the one listed as Puller there, of course, it's Aaron Rovers at the club, Shannon Bridge. Ballycumber and Dune all represented on this side this afternoon. We'll take you through the t- two teams and I'll start with the Gallon Community School side in goals, Owen Coughlin. Your full back line is spread across the three clubs. Brandon Delaney of Aaron Rovers, Dara Mannion, Shannon Bridge and Jake Maher for Ban. Eamon Maher, Luke Fitzgerald and James Wren are the half back line. Team captain Connor Grennan alongside Michael Spillane at midfield. Your half forward line, there'll be a lot of scoring power in this sector. Senan Hanafi and Luke Kelly of Dune at 11 and 12 with for Ban's Brian Carroll, former Offaly minor at uh, number 10. 
Brennan and then the inside forward line Owen Grennan right corner forward Lee Moore full forward and then Colm Egan who's been in sensational scoring form he's top of the left the skull wearer Buncran aside captained by centre forward Sean McLaughlin uh, in goals Stephen McNulty number two Daniel McMenamin Leo Kelly of Burt and Elliot Freel very promising young defender at number four your half back line Fiona Reardon Andrew Davidson and Connor Graham at uh, midfield is Aaron Cleary and Don Logue O'Brien cross country runner so we know what kind of uh, energy we're going to get from him half forward line again a lot of scoring power here with Sean McLaughlin the captain and Shawnee Bradley at right forward there's a change at number 12 Dara Coyle does not start and he's been replaced by number 20 Jamie McCauley uh, your full forward line then Dylan Mulholland Billy Duffy, uh, godson of my co-commentator here, so uh, expect plenty of bias when it comes to that. And Oshin McIntyre is top of the left. Your referee for this afternoon is John Glavy of Mayo. I'm used to seeing him on very wet and windswept afternoons in Beacon as we cover Connacht Schools matches. Uh, windy here this afternoon, strong breeze. I'm waiting to see who's going to have the benefit of it in the first half. But uh, overall, dry conditions, so you'd expect decent scoring here this afternoon. Yeah, look at it. Um Conditions are perfect out there. You talk about the really strong half forward line for Gallon. We think about the half back line for um, Skullwar of Buncrana. I feel that that's their strength. So it'll be a good battle, intriguing to see how it fares out between two. And I do believe the early scores will come crucial today because the conditions are perfect. Take advantage of the win, whatever team has it, and then th- that will settle a team. Because all Ireland final, it's the first time for these lads to play in an all Ireland final for a lot of the young lads and to adapt and to deal with, with the pressures that comes with it and the talk around locally around the Bunkrana town itself and how that's dealt with um, is going to be vital earlier on. That's it, because we did mention it, like it is a new, it's breaking new ground for school. We're a, um, what has been different this year that has changed things for the school? I mean, obviously, look, you look at Kieran Thompson on the sideline, of course, as a factor, but what has been different that they were able to do, you know, that they were to succeed this year in a way that they weren't before? Um, to be biased, I do think a club's got a lot of act together within, within the coaching. A lot of this... Uh, Skull were a team where the backbone of beating the finalists in the county minor final with, uh, against four masters. They are the feeder team for Abbey in the other final, so they are today. So when you're thinking about nine Von Krana players involved with that, and then Lee Podrigus Cahin has really been feeding a lot of good under age teams throughout the year, the Division 2 minors, and they're com- competing really well at a under 21 level. So that's the feeder team that's coming through. So I think I really do think it's the work down the clubs. School is taking the recognise and tapping into it. And the likes of Kieran Thompson being involved, they give that re- boost of energy. Mm, absolutely. Gallon Community School, of course, uh, much stronger track record historically. Actually, uh, team manager Joe Maher would have been involved with the side when they won in All-Ireland Vocational Schools. It's, it's a vocational school title in 2011 of course the school picked up as, uh, one of course not actually top of the head was it 17 or 18 since then but uh, it has slipped down the grades a little bit just purely a reflection of numbers uh, roughly only 200 boys in the school uh, mixed school of course so very difficult to compete against some bigger schools but equally good track record clubs doing great work as we pause here for our on Naveen So as we break and get ready to go here for the, for any neutrals who might be tuned in just looking for a good game of football of a uh, Saturday afternoon Gallon Community School are wearing the navy and white stripes skull wear bun crana in light blue and white shorts uh, it looks like it's hard to actually tell with the wind would you say there's a significant advantage it looks like it feels like it's nearly coming across the pitch as anything it's coming across the pitch favouring Gallon Community um, sc- school 
slightly in the first half, by, by, and I think it's swerving. I could pick up actually too. I see the flags going up and down and coming across. So slight vantage to Gallon Community School as we, th as we throw on here. Absolutely. I see Jamie McCauley has actually gone into full forward, and I look. it looks like Luke Fitzgerald has actually gone back to pick him up uh, as we get ready. John Glavy gets ready to throw the ball up here. Ball is up in the air. Oh, uh, Conor Grennan goes up for it. Ball is broken down. Looks like Michael Spillane takes it. Tackles coming in hard. Oh, that's an excellently timed tackle by Sean McLaughlin. Spills the ball back in favour of the Skull Wirra side. And it's Aaron Cleary who picks it up. Work back across the half-back line here now. And a first meaningful possession of the game for Skull Wirra Bunkrana. Yeah, no, I, I don't feel there's any significant wind advantage here. We'll yeah. probably tell with the kickouts, but it doesn't uh, It doesn't look at the moment like you'd need to be four or five ahead. Either side would want to be ahead at half-time just to be par, if you like. No, it's, it's early possession is, and it's Donald O'Brien on the ball there. He's a, he's a son of uh, Donald O'Brien, a famous Derry City soccer uh, originally from Dublin. Absolutely. Well, it's a, it's definitely a school with a fine soccer tradition, and they face into an Ulster FAI final. I think it's next Thursday they take that on. So, uh, and I believe it's eight of the starters will be involved in that team as well. So, plenty plenty to keep them occupied. Long ball forward by Elliot Freel into the corner, bounces over the head of Dylan Milholland, and it's well gathered up on the Gallon side. Good work there by Jake Maher. Ball across and uh, a little bit of pressure in their own corner here trying to work it out hand pass out in a little bit of space Brian Carroll coming back to help up his back line hard tackles coming in but he gets the ball away but it's still extremely tight the tackling is coming in from Billy Duffy there has he forced the spill he has forced the spill it looks like Skullwear Bunkrana might have made it but no it's broken back on the gallon side ball across here and they might have a chance now as uh, Conor Grennan picks it up and carries the ball out strong runner works the ball across here first oh to Brian Carroll and he's been pinged for charging there on the way out Con uh, Connor, Connor Grennan leashed out with hand pulled him back and I think a referee turned to freeze the other way Skull were a high press worked very well earlier on might be the sign of things to come they're not letting Gallon Community School come out with the ball too easy I think at a high pressure we, earlier we had um, Elliot Breel trying to pick out the star man uh, Dylan Holland and he's been well marked and shepherded by Jake Maher there so he was so that's an early yellow card for the Gallon captain after just yep. two minutes so uh, that obviously would imp impede on him a little bit a harsh yellow card I feel uh, you know he, mm. he did give a wee nudge to pull back but I don't think there were any intentional striking so probably the first opportunity to really get a feel for the wind here mm. Sean McLaughlin uh you know, very uh, talented player. You mentioned very strong academically. Also listed on his player profile yeah. that his favourite music is smooth jazz. I don't know if I believe that one or not now. I think he might have been playing a few games with the programmers there. But uh, uh, Sean's head boy in the school and he's a 45 kicker for Bunkrana senior team. So it'll be interesting to see how he measures this. He's definitely got the distance, but looks like could be pulled left. It's broken back into play and gathered there by Owen Coughlin in the Gallon Community School goal. And it's a little bit of a high tackle there as well. Again, I wouldn't, from Aaron Cleary, um, again, I wouldn't have said that was worthy of a card either, but uh, no, it looks like there's a notebook coming out here too. So The referee's making his mark very early in the game. That's two yellow cards. Aaron Cleary there just led maybe the shoulder in the back. It's, it's a free out of all. So it's, it's a harsh, harsh picking. I feel I feel better I feel better that I agree with you on both counts there now I would have felt biased if I only although although Aaron has got away without the yellow card there he's actually pushed up into the full forward line he's being picked up at the moment by Jake Maher as that ball is chipped back by Michael Spillane and takes the return pass and now carries it out at the moment Skullwira back off him the tackle is coming in from behind Brian Carroll looks to try and carry the ball out he's picked up a lot of deep positions in the first half uh, come back to pick up ball ball across here towards Conor Grennan there's a little bit of space on this side but instead they go back in towards the centre as James Wren carries carries out his run carries on up forward Brian Carroll now floats that ball in it's a bounce ball it's in in front of Colm Egan but it breaks out in front and it's uh, handled on the ground and going to be a free out there now it was um, it was a difficult ball for a corner forward to win because to be honest even if he picks that up he has his back to goal 45 metres out absolutely and you see Skull World is going very defensive too and try to kick that ball and they're not much room for manoeuvring on there so I think we're in for a real defensive setup with both teams maybe long ball out to the wing here Conor Graham finds Shawnee Bradley Bradley with the uh, unusual zero on the back of the jersey hadn't noticed that before <laughs> but uh, we can identify him anyway good distinctive modern hairstyle yeah. I remember um previously oh that's an excellent ball in by Oshin McIntyre shot on the turn from Billy Duffy doesn't quite catch it the way he wants uh, referee says there was a little bit of a touch on it so it looks like we're going to have a 45 here says there was a bit of a touch from the defender um, 
Again, no. that's, that's over to Sean McLaughlin now to kick 45. Um, uh, Billy Duffy maybe maybe snapped it a wee bit too soon. He should have maybe there maybe a man on side that he could let lay it off and take his time because you were shooting there from 20 metres. Get the settle and score, and then we're on really for a game on. Absolutely. So you'd, you'd say maybe probably was a yard short of distance when he was shooting from further wide. This one very, very central. So uh, you suspect that McLaughlin will have the distance at least if he can get the accuracy. Um it's a very rugby-like stance that he has going on here. He's doing his uh, programme through Dave Alfred through the rugby <laughs> situation. I know, I'm well aware that he's talking about his kicking. It puts a lot of effort and time in the Scarabian Bunkrana for his kicking. This one comes in. It's either left or over. It's one or the other. It's he, close to that post. It has score, gone over. Score. Excellent strike. It was close to that post and the umpire wasn't giving Anton away. He wasn't going to give us any indication as it was coming up. So first blood to Skullwear Bunkrana and... Uh, Definitely, in terms of territory, they've had the better of it so far. Absolutely, and uh, to, to get in that position and maybe be fortunate to get the 45 because Billy Duffy did snap the shot and to give him the leading score. So Gallon retained their own kick out, and again, Brian Carroll has handled a lot of balls so far. Flicks that hand pass across. Another chance for Gallon to build up an attack here. It's uh, in possession. I can't quite tell. It could be Owen Grennan there. It's flicked back towards Brian Carroll. So Colm Egan is really the only man inside in the full forward line at the moment. He's making runs side to side, being picked up by Daniel McMenamin inside. And it's a but there's three Buncrana players that are the nearest guys in front of him, so the long ball isn't really on. Uh, again, Grennan wins it. He looks up for the long delivery and it's not there. He has to recycle again. Goes back in towards his midfield partner, Michael Spillane, and across towards Carl again. It's very, very patient, but there's no obvious sign that the uh, space is going to open up in there either. Uh, run forward here from Luke Kelly. Very, very sharp player, very capable scorer as well. If he can get involved in the game, recycle through Sen and Hanafi. Looking to try and come up through the, come up through the back with Spillane here now. And uh, you have to say, Bunkrana's shape looks very, very, looks very, very solid here. Ball looking for James Wren, but that one is going to scoot ahead of him, and Conor Graham is able to shepherd it out. So it's, as you said, Skullwear, their defensive shape is very, very good. It's narrow. It's given nothing it's away inside. It's given nothing, and they're forcing Gallon down to the wings, and they want them down the wings, and they're and they're trying to force a kick on the side because they feel they got comfortable in there. Elliot Freel to mop it up. So it's really well good defending for Skullwear's perspective. Um, forcing Gallon to play the ball wrong, maybe we little options. So Oshin McIntyre has spent a lot of time in his own back line so far. He flicks it across towards Elliot Freel. Elliot Freel tries to break the tackle. He's got the free there. And uh, ball back across and a chance for Aaron Cleary now. Aaron Cleary striding forward. Uh, Gallant don't really come to meet him, but he's not going to shoot from there. Gets the, uh, Conor Graham now cutting inside. Dice is a little bit with steps. Conor Graham gets the block on it. Gallant able to mop up, mop up the pieces there. But again, Buncrana, they've got the tackles in. Gallon have to be very, very careful here not to get closed down. Carroll flicks that hand pass out. It's loose. It's too far away from Luke Fitzgerald. And again, Skullwear are able to pick it up here. Um, but not unlike at the other end, there's not an awful lot to kick into there. No, and I think Skullwear is trying to build it from the back. You see how deep Dylan Mulholland is. That's their marksman. He's coming out to get the ball. It was a massive tackle by Elliot Freel, who played with Donegal Miners last Wednesday night against Fermanagh and had a star game, of them led to believe. Well, there you go. There's nothing. Sometimes managers might say they don't want your players being too busy, but if you're going to put in good form, the shot comes in here. Oh, it's close. It's just going to drift wide of the posts from Don Logan O'Brien. Uh, it, it it looked like it was a perfectly good opportunity. He had to take the shot on from there. The shot was on on certainly, and he failed failed to kick it. That's the second wide to that right hand side of the post. Um, for goal were. A so this time around now, Owen Coughlin looking for the short kick out, but it's not really being conceded. I have to say, Skullwira did well. They got their set up. They don't have a... It's not a particularly attacking press. Aaron Cleary goes up for it, but just can't quite hold on to it. Gallon pick up the break. It's worked back across here. The break was won by Eamon Maher, and now they're feeding it across. Oh, that's a dangerous ball. Could break either direction. Very well done there by Shawnee Bradley. Oh, just got away got away from Don Logo Brian there, but still possession for Skullwira. Really well done by Dylan Mulholland. Came out of the tackle, got the pass away, we'll probably have to take it again here now, Mulholland sizes up his options, was never really going to shoot from there, defender didn't buy the dummy, ball comes back inside, chance for Sean McLaughlin now to try and force something, try and open up the play a little bit, Ushin McIntyre comes onto it from deep, McIntyre floats that ball out towards the right hand side, it's a tight angle, ball comes back inside, Elliot Freel maybe has a chance to shoot here, no, pulls the ball down, doesn't pull the trigger, now chance for Sean McLaughlin, we know he can shoot from distance, high kick comes in but it drops short of the right hand post, and uh, 
There was a couple of opportunities there maybe to pull the trigger or was the, or would you feel that, that maybe that wasn't a chance? No, well, maybe Sean, Sean could have, again, took his time on it. Elliot Freel had an opportunity, didn't take the chances and Skullworthy, see they're slightly nervous, it's gotten a shooting, it's their third wide at the minute and Johnny Bradley and Nixon turn over a couple of loose balls from Gallon. If they can tidy that up, they can get maybe Skullworthy in the counter attack. So, ball is dinked forward here from Lee Moore, chipped in. I think this could be uh, sending Hanafi's first chance to try and get forward, get facing towards the opposition goal. He flicks that hand pass inside. That's a really well-timed run here now. The shot comes in. The shot comes in. It's pulled wide of the target by Luke Fitzgerald. And uh, again, probably you're always stretching a little bit, shooting from about 40 metres out. That, that's that, and again, Gallon I think is looking for their settling score, and it's a really great play by uh, Senan Hanafi. He's, he's moving around the field. He looks busy. He's going to be the one that what the one that's going to be has a big uh, part to play in this game as, as we go on. So again, the look towards the look towards Shawnee Bradley from the kick out, and it works out well. It's ball flicked towards Conor Graham. He has a bit of open country towards him. The solo goes a little bit high. Flicks that ball inside towards Cleary. Cleary just about oh that's an excellent pass nice. did well to get that out of the tackle good scoring chance here for Billy Duffy shapes onto his right foot he wheels away you can tell by the reaction he's very happy with that one he splits the uprights and Skull Werribun Crana two, go- two scores to the good that's it and, and it was a good move to, f- to find Shawnee Bradley Shawnee Bradley staying away from the midfield hugging the sidelines looking for the kick out great ball into Aaron Cleary that found Billy left on his own to have a free shot at it and it leaves us two points ahead so, and again, Buncran have scored, secured the turnover on the kick out as well. Chance here for chance here for McLaughlin. McLaughlin throws it up in the air and throws it up between the posts. That's his second score of the afternoon. And all of a sudden now, three points. It feels like a substantial lead here. It, it does with the conditions in the field that the, 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 they're against a the bit of the breeze. So they are. And again, Sean McLaughlin, captain of the team, leading it, leading all the way from it. And. Skull were, were forcing Gallon out the wings and are picking up the midfield kickouts and that's very important. Gallon needs to get on top of the kickouts or they'll find themselves another point or two behind. Elliot Freel dinks that ball inside. Lovely ball for an inside forward. Oh, it's flicked here. That's a vital touch. Sean Bradley d- dinks it low. Sean Bradley gets it under the goalkeeper. It looked like Gallon had forced the spill there but that's an absolutely crucial score in the context of this game. Massive goal. Goals are massive in this here to go 1-3 one, one, up. The, the defender did very well, put his hand on, he had no support coming back in there. Gallant stopped, working working back where they could have closed it out. That should not have went on in the net. Great work by Shawnee Brady to keep um, persevering, to keep going and keep going. And he got awarded for it. Again, Skullworth has won the kick out and they've won the last three kick outs in this game. And, that's, and he got scored from it. That's where the dominance is stemming from, absolutely. But it was good work as well. Give a little bit of credit there to Jamie McCauley. He co- collected the ball well, and it was straight in, looking up. Wasn't looking to take a play on the ball. He saw the option was on. Really s- smart layoff. Unlucky on the defender side. I think it was James Wren that got a little touch on the ball. But uh, Bradley, he improvised really well when the ball hit the deck. Uh, absolutely. And, and again, Bradley will be part of that soccer team that's playing in the final <laughs> next week. So he's used, he used a skill. Son of the famous uh, Shane Bradley that played football for Donegal football and also for Van Harp. So it's <laughs> it's in the blood did you say there you go well you talk about uh, <laughs> you know lear- learning from different sports and so on well definitely he brought the uh, he brought the lessons of Finn Park or wherever straight straight here to Markovic Park in Sligo Gallon still in need of that crucial first settling score if they're going to get it this game could be gone away from them before they even get the chance to get on the scoreboard ball flicked across here towards Michael Spillane Spillane drives through the tackle really well done advantage being played here no advantage accruing and it's going to be a free but I suspect uh, I'm, I'm looking at here the flags are now you know you still couldn't say it's a big advantage What I'd say what's in it is with Skullwera but yeah. it's not making a massive impact on the game not, not massive but yet give credit to Michael's plan there that he sees his team in trouble he's trying to pull it out he's demanding the ball he's encouraging the players on there he deserves that free it, it took two three Skullwera players to pull him back so they have a free and they have an opportunity here now to get a score on the board settle the team and build from that absolutely so the ball being placed on the deck here Senan Hanafi goes back to replace it a second time. So I suspect the wind is coming kind of towards towards the camera, if you like. Yeah. Uh, so he'll probably hoist this up, maybe look to try and get about 15 yards to the left of the post, see will it come in. It's a good strike. It might drop short, but it's a good strike. It's gone over the crossbar. That's an excellent free kick. Excellent free kick with a 45 left foot. Pounded up there. It's floating in there. The type of free kick for that, that swirling one. 
Well, that is a fantastic score and a badly, badly needed one from a Gallon Community School perspective. But again, Skull World, the win, the kick out, and they probably win it a little bit easier. If you're able to pick it up uncontested on your own 45 metre line, that's not really what you want to be looking for there. Ball flicked out here towards uh, towards Shawnee Bradley. Uh, Bradley. Oshin Gallon on the ball. He's part of the Donegal under 20 team. He's coming in as a third midfielder, and he's been left free, and he's picking up a lot of loose ball and setting the platform for Skull World to attack from, from himself from Oshin McIntyre. There you go. So strong run forward here from Andrew Davidson. Looks to go in a straight line, flicks that ball across. Again, Gallon just about managed to force him out where he can't do a lot of damage. But Elliot Freel again. Elliot Freel has nearly been involved as an attacker as much as a defender in this game. As that high ball comes in from Aaron Cleary, it's going to drop short. It's going to break, and the break just about being picked up on the Gallon side. Eventually been won there by Luke Fitzgerald as the ball comes down the sideline. That's a difficult one there for Brian Carroll to fight for. Um, and well done, I have to say, Conor Graham. He put his body on the line and he put himself in there in front. Yeah, it's going to be a 50-50 very much too. It's good hard hat and good fair hat and two guys got up and got on with it. And you may hear that about the football and Conor Graham's going to feel the effects of that. Well, he did what he, he did what he needed to do. He knew the hit was coming yep. and he took it anyway and made sure he got his hands on the ball. Ball flicked back by Andrew Davidson here now. And again, we have Skull Weir up. Skull we're a possession and it just it, it just allows them to feel comfortable you know they don't have to be conscious of the fact that oh we're in an All-Ireland final we're under pressure here it feels more natural when you're playing with the ball no nope, it sure is and it was a good mark taken by the captain Sean McLaughlin again and the Skull World is using the width using every inch of grass in the field Shawnee Bradley in one wing maybe um, getting out to Billy Duffy or Sean on the, on the other and they're switching the ball over and back and looking for a pocket of Dylan Holland or even um, Shawnee getting inside I'd say um, there's a few traditionalists might uh, balk at your uh, characterisation of that as a good mark a little 15 yard dink into a guy just inside the 45 metre line yeah. I think uh, that's the one a lot of people want to get rid of but look yeah. if you're a player you use the rules as they are uh, as again Bradley works that ball back here McIntyre again flicks it from side to side to the only players it's only Hanafi and uh, Leo Kelly that's back other than of course goalkeeper Stephen McNulty uh, Elliot Freel with the shot now off the outside of the right boot and the umpire declares that it's just gone to the wide at the right hand side it's actually um, all the skull were wides coming on that one yes. side and, and, and that's very strange, but the shooting is up in that top end, so they're they're missing in the near side for it. And I know Elliot Free got on Billy Duffy missing Sean McLaughlin missed up in that side. Again, they were all scoreable um, kicks that that they should have them maybe one six one one seven up to a point. Well, there you go. So Gallant, uh, they managed to win that kick out. They went short over towards this corner here towards Brandon Delaney and eventually worked the ball out, uh, but. As you can imagine, Skull Rira. And as you say there, sure enough, it's Oshin McIntyre that's in front. He's the he's the plus one. And then you have in front of him, well, Elliot Freel seems to be kind of on. He's not really picking up anyone from a defensive point of view in terms of marking sense. Again, he's nearly the plus two there. As again, the tackling comes in. Skull Rira forced the turnover. Sean McLaughlin's in to pick up the loose pieces and carry this ball out. And again, I have to say, Conor Graham I've been very impressed with so far overall. He's making a lot of ground here. He might be getting on the score sheet, but he's having a big bearing on the game. What what they're doing is they're breaking. When they're breaking, they're breaking with width and depth, and, and they're getting up the feelings. I like why Shawnee Bradley getting on the, on a lot of ball. So he has, and, and Skull were breaking out, finding the wings for players. Players are getting out into the wing. It's it's something that is a strength to their game. Elliot Freel again, getting up in the field. I thought Eddie, Elliot Freel would be doing a man-marking job. Kieran Thompson obviously gave him a licence to get forward and he's proven effective doing it. So Bradley now takes possession, flicks that ball onwards. We haven't seen an awful lot of Dylan Mulholland so far, but he hasn't given the ball away either and he's had this in a difficult situation. He was unlucky there now. I thought he put the ball on the ground. I think it would have been a turnover anyway, but yeah. he did put the ball on the ground, so I think he the overcarrying call was harsh. He, he did, and he's got a special attention. He's double, maybe treble marked at the time. They're the key man, so, that, so obviously Gallant did his homework on, on nullifying Dylan Mulholland, but the captain, Sean McLaughlin, stepping up and other players stepping up, and Dylan's finding it a wee bit frustrating with one or two players on him. So Gallant carry the ball forward here, but uh, it has to be said that... Is there a sense that maybe Gallon need to commit more men forward? Because I'm looking at six Gallon players back here. As that high ball is dropped in, oh, here's a chance to maybe attack something. And it's actually Gallon possession. Brian Carroll here wins that ball. Oh, he's pulled it wide of the target. That's a very disappointing wide from Gallon's perspective. 19 minutes into the game, it was a good chance there to put a score on the board. And really, yeah. it shouldn't have been his ball because there were three Skullwira guys around him. Again, I was ricocheted in there and, and Brian Carroll should have got a score there. And, and it went wide again. Maybe I keep talking about... Slight 
right with the nerves. Again, Skull Warrior gets the ball easier out. Um, so, so they do. What you're saying is, does Gallon, they're not committing enough men forward. They're being very conservative. It's not getting the scores. It's allowing the double up, the treble ups being for Skull Warriors defence and they're coming out with the ball then with a bit of width. Because I was looking at it there, as 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 Gallon were carrying that attack forward, I had to break back to the play. But like Jamie McCauley was the only Skullwira player forward, and there were six Gallon guys inside their own yes. half. You know, I understand you're not going to leave one on one, but six on one seems a bit overkill. As uh, Gallon just about forced that turnover there, but they're in a very tight position, and eventually the flag goes up, and it's going to be a sideline ball to Skullwira there. Um, look, because that's that's the other that's the other side of the game. People bemoan the defensive side, but. As backs, you've got to be able to push forward and support the attack and look to kind of, you know, you don't get huge acres of space, but you need to look at those little pockets and attack them. Look at when you're leaving six men defence, how are you going to get in? It takes something special to get a score. And, and Gallon needs to commit men forward if you want to get another couple of scores on the board. So Skullwear have retained that sideline in a difficult position. The ball is across here towards Aaron Cleary. Aaron Cleary flicks that ball back. Andrew Davidson now and again we just we, it seems like we've seen a lot of this just Skullwear a controlling play across the middle third. Uh, just moving it across, waiting to break a line. People like Aaron Cleary getting into possession and maybe trying to find Dylan or a fist pass, or, or and then they'll make sure they'll always have the American word a quarterback to pop it back when they run into trouble. So hand pass flicked across there. It was Fiona Reardon playing it into Billy Duffy, but that particular shot has dropped short, and Gallon are able to carry the ball out. Uh, again, Carl doing what he can. He, he has to say he's been hugely involved. He's been looking to get into the game. Just. Uh, it's a pity that it's a pity that score didn't come off, but uh, carries this one forward. No real options, and he's carried it up into a narrow channel. Ball back inside. Chance here for Lee Moore now. And again, Gallon would. This time they have committed more guys forward, albeit there's a kind yeah. of a line around midfield. Uh, oh, we're looking for the long ball there. That is ambitious to say the least of it. Long ball goes in, well <coughs> broken down. It was actually Elliot Freel broke it down. Gallon have retained possession, however. Chance for them to do it again. Ch possession here for Luke Kelly. Luke Kelly comes inside. Luke Kelly off the right boot. That one's going to drop short as well. Ooh, not the most confident handling in the world from the keeper there, now it has to be said. No, Keir, uh, Steve McNulty um, was hesitating going for it. Lucky Shawnee Bradley is back in there. And here's Dylan Mulholland on the ball. He's V1, V1, maybe two coming on it. And it's going to happen. Mulholland tries to shoot that off the left boot. He wasn't really in a good position there. It was a lovely ball into him from Sean McLaughlin. Floated right over the top. Yep. Perfect for him to run onto, but uh, the wrong position, really. Either keep running or, you know, feed it inside, but not yep. shooting from there. And Dillon's tried to find Jimmy McCauley there for, for a handy score, but maybe maybe another yard or two would have made a big difference there. Ball flicked out here towards Jake Maher. Jake Maher hand passes the ball up the sideline again. It's very, very tight with Carl. Carl has no choice but to flick that hand pass up. And Mulholland is in there to scoop up the pieces and get it back inside towards McLaughlin. Ball across now towards Aaron Cleary. Aaron Cleary back again towards Ushin McIntyre. And again, Skullwira do what they've been doing all game. They settle it down. They establish a little bit of control. Get themselves into that kind of position they want. And the other side of it too is you see you're forcing Gallant to expend a lot of energy here chasing them around. That's absolutely, and you could see Kevin Campbell there, the school manager there, telling Skullwara, take your time, spread it about, don't be panicking, don't be rushing any shots. And I think that's Skullwara's message here today is just retain the ball, retain the ball, maybe hold on to a score and try to work for another one. Well, that's it. And look, when you have a five-point lead up on the scoreboard, it really gives you an awful lot of freedom to do that. But high hand pass in towards Aaron Cleary, but Cleary does really well. Goes to ground. That refereeing call could have gone either way, I think it's fair to say. I, I, I could have went either way, but it did have felt Aaron was off the ground and maybe he was charging in a wee bit. Um, so the referee was closer to the play than we were. I'd give him the benefit of the doubt in this one. There you go. We'll be very, very, we'll be very, very neutral here. So we have 23 minutes gone in this Mesita Post Primary Schools All Ireland Senior D Football Final. Ball flicked out here towards Brian Carroll. Gallon trying to get back into this game. Only the one score so far. That's sending Hanafy free. Uh, Carroll flicks that ball inside. Ball back out here now towards James Wren. Can they get a scoring opportunity? A little bit of a high tackle. Shot comes in from Luke Fitzgerald. That's a tricky one. Did he? Oh no, he's pulled it wide. He's blown the free. He's blown the free. He's blown for the free. He and has indeed. Sean McLaughlin has dead foul late and the referee was good calls to let advantage play on and pull it back for the free. Yeah, you could see that there. The umpire was waiting to wave wide, wave wide all right, but uh, chance for Carroll here now to make up for his earlier miss. And uh, really impossible to overstate the importance of this because I suppose the other side of it is you pop this one over and maybe get one more before half time. If you get it back to within a goal, given how the game has gone, 
Gallon would probably arguably be nearly the happier team. School football, three, four points doesn't make a difference, especially at half time. And Gallon will be, if they can close the gap, they were um, five behind. If they can close the gap to two, three before half time, we'll be in for some um, second half. So Brian Carroll floats down in. It's close. It's off, off the, the po post. It breaks down into the box. It's been picked up there by Donal O'Brien. Oh, that's another very poor miss. It's a poor miss from Carroll. There's no getting away from it. He's having a huge game from open play, but just those two misses look, feel like they could be hugely consequential. That could wreck his confidence for the day. Two big opportunities to score there, to leave it three points in it, and, he, and, and they, they missed it coming off the post. It's a, it's a big score to lose. We'll see what happens now. Can he react again? He's on a lot of ball, like he said but just get the shooting right. Well, that's it. Like, Look, I suppose it's, from a coaching point of view, he's doing everything right in terms of he's putting himself in there, getting involved in the game. He's not shying away from it, but it just, it's, it's just unfortunate the end product. It just isn't happening. Elliot Friel flicks the, flicks the ball outside here. Oshin McIntyre with the long-range shot in. That one is close to the right-hand post as well. And I feel like we keep saying this. It's all on the one side. Five ways for Skull Warriors on the right-hand side post. And uh, it's something that maybe... Kevin Campbell and Kieran Thompson need the dress at half time. Why is it going, going there? That shot was definitely on by the under 20 star, Oshin McIntyre. So a little bit of space at midfield. Michael Spillane picks it up. Chance now. He didn't give the low ball in. It was the first time there that Senan Hanafi got out in front of Leo Kelly. Ball flicked in here now. Oh, just not quite handled well by Luke Kelly. And it looks like a giveaway. Hanafi tries to chase it down, but that's brave work. Excellent work there by Shawnee Bradley. Yeah. Johnny Bradley and again Oshin McIntyre beat pale and playing that extra man defence is going on a serious amount of ball. It was a great kick out by the gallant keeper Sean Coughlin. Spot Skull were a push right up them, but spot the um, Splan in the middle to, to receive the ball. Exactly. Spillan had found space there. Now we have Skull were on Cran on the break. Billy Duffy takes that one in. I'm not sh I think the referee's actually given a free I don't know, was it Duffy or is he he's, he looks like he's pointing at Fitzgerald. That Fitzgerald might have ran into somebody. He's even taken his notebook out, so it obviously was it something significant. I'd be lying if I said I had eyes on what he's supposed to have done it there. It seems that Sean McLaughlin checked the runner. He's having a conversation with Sean. Sean was very close to man. The captain of the team she checked, the, checked the runner while running, so he's given the free the other way. I imagine we're going to see a yellow card. That's the two captains booked today, um, very early in the game. Yeah, well, it's, it's funny. I mean, obviously, he checked the runner. I'd say he was a little bit nervous that there might have been a black card possibility if that was the case. Yeah. Obviously, you'd like to prefer to see 15 on 15 continue if, if that's at all possible. Ball floated in here. Oh, that's well won now on the Gallon side. Ball flicked out here. It's actually a chance for Jake Maher. Maher floats that one in. Maher floats that one over the bar. And that's a crucial score. Not the source you would have expected, but at the same time, vitally important score. And, you know, really good, really good win inside as well. Jake Maher giving the job to Mark, a key man, Dylan Mulholland, and Dylan went in the defensive mm. position. Jake said, I'm going to go with you here, sir, and get up the field and get on the score. Again, that's a big score before we head to the break. There's one inside. I'm actually looking here. It looks like, and I don't know how he's crept in, it looks like it could be Rory Woods mm. operating inside at full forward at this stage, mm. which I haven't, uh, not sure where that came from, but one where I will have to check that out. Um, I'd be very annoyed at my uh, hometown lads if they've misled me and not told me that there was a change on the starting team. Um, but one way or another Gallon with another possession here so we have got back to 1-3 yeah. to 2 points 28 minutes gone Gallon's going through a real good purple patch at the minute they're running the kickouts in both ends they're dominating the game in this last period and they're looking to get another score on it we're really in for a big game if they do that they're wanting the ball they're pushed a lot more men up and that was their issue at the start once they get players forward they're finding options inside so it's Brian Carr with the ball there now ball flicked out here Oh, that was an ambitious hand pass. I was trying to weave it in between traffic. Now, the same could be said of Daniel McMenamin's clearance there. It's asking an awful lot of Sean McLaughlin. And Gallon secured the turnover. And again, it's a tricky pass to win. Lee Moore has it here. Lovely turn of pace by the full forward. Lee Moore sprints inside. But so much Buncrana cover there. He's going to do very well to extract play out of that. Uh, Colm Egan hasn't really had a chance to get into the game too much so far. He's had very, very few possessions. I don't know, could you call that a possession now, what it is out there? Uh, referee says look that's just heavy traffic and we'll just throw the ball up yeah I think uh, Skull were really swarmed him they pushed him out of the wings and said let's go for this ball let's go for this turnover Daniel McMenamin could have did better coming out for the ball he left um, his captain Sean McLaughlin very exposed with a looping ball in the high they give Gallon the opportunity to turn it over the play in the last five or six minutes has been with Gallon and you know they're they're, they're looking for scores Skull were are very deep and defending very hard so it's really making it frustrating for them to get scores 
So they did well on the tr on the throw up ball there. The ball was flicked out towards Donal O'Brien. Donal O'Brien, he took the hit. And uh, again, the pressure here on the keeper. And definitely it looks like Rory Woods is in there. They're looking for the over-carrying call. Over -carrying. And they've got it. Quick free going inside towards Brian Carl here. The defence is unsettled. Carl with the shot. Carl over the bar. Oh, that probably he needed to see the twine dance there, I suspect. That, that, that would be the score that would settle him but the keeper again um, Steve McNulty didn't want the ball he just ran into traffic when you're a goalkeeper you don't run into traffic it's, it's not on the box where you get maybe a, a free a lot handier you come out you've got to get that ball released the one minute additional time to play and it, it, it is luck there are only three points in it and there's still a, there's still a play to make Gallon has been on top of Skullworth's kick out in the last few minutes so th again, Steve McNulty with the kick out. He floats it into traffic. It's looked to be broken back down, but well won on the skull. We're aside. Ball hits the deck there. Fiona Reardon, I thought O'Reardon possibly could have got the benefit of the doubt from the referee. The free comes eventually uh, when Don Logan Bryan hits the deck. Um, that was a big win from Skull Wirra because, you know, it's, it's their own little kind of. They just need to ride out this little wave at the moment. Probably will feel okay, maybe at the same time. They're still, they're still very strong looking when they're on the ball. They are indeed, and they're attacking with a lot of width and depth. And um, Skull, Skull were just maybe once again in out half time or retain the possession. Do not drop another score. Looking for Johnny Bradley's out here in the wing. Can something come out of it? It's so Bradley now has plenty of time on the ball. He's a little bit too far out. Oh, he steps inside. Lovely. Just managed to step inside James Wren there. The shot comes in from ha from uh, Sean McLaughlin. And again, wide of the target. So there is an element of Skull Wirra leaving Gallon in this game with their shooting. I'm not saying... There weren't m too many of the sc shots that you would say were gimmies, but at the same time, the percentage is probably yeah. not what it should be. They should have two, three scores at least on, on the board and the ref calls it halt to half time here. So John Glavy calls half time here in this Masita Post Primary Schools Senior D final. It is Gallon Community School three points, Skull Wirra Buncrana one goal and three points. You're a manager, you're used to being in dressing rooms. Tell me who's the happier team right now. Gallon for the last 10 minutes, they've certainly the purple patch is what they do in the next 10 minutes. And I never like see a team going in um, being deflated at half time. And Skull were certainly been five, six points up, full coming in. What do we let slip away? So what um, Kevin Campbell, Kieran Thompson do, get the lads settled, look for another score in the half time. Otherwise, Gallon too, they will be looking to, let's push, we've got them rattled here. Let's get an early score on the board. Gallon scored the first point of the second half for a two point game. The game's really coming to life. So, like that, obviously, former Donegal under 20 manager, current senior, bun, uh, current Buncrana first team manager. Talk to me about what you'd be, would you be looking at any personnel switches on either side? Not even necessarily, I'm talking about naming players, but are there sectors of the field where you'd say, okay, Skull, we need to do something different here, or Gallon need to do something different in a different sector? What I'd be looking for maybe is the likes of Sean McLaughlin, get into your scoring range, stop taking shots from left, right and centre, get into the area where you're most comfortable at. Dylan Mulholland, keep probing, keep probing, keep looking for the ball. Yes, they're two on you, but get out of the way, maybe move them, maybe move Gallon players, take two with you, open up a bit of space on it, and maybe do look for Dylan to get on the ball more often. He may be not demanding, he's switching on to more defensive mode, and that, that, that allowed um, Jake Maher to get a score for Gallon because he's switching on that. Dylan's best position is up front. If maybe if Skull were going to leave anybody up front, it should be that guy because he will hold back two, three gallon men because they'll want to keep on top of him because if he goes one on one, that ball, he, he's a hard man to stop. The other thing I want to touch on is that uh, there hasn't been a lot by way of goal chance. I mean, you could argue even Sean Bradley's goal, it sort of came out from a bit of chaos. When Sean took possession, he probably would have been happy to pop the ball over the bar, but just the way the ball fell and he improvised brilliantly. In terms of creating goal chances, it looks like Gallon are a little bit more fond of the direct ball route. I'm going to say it is Rory Woods that's actually operating at full forward there. I don't think I've seen Owen Grennan, so that's possible. And I actually think I see Owen Grennan out there with the subs at half-time. Um, but Gallon look like they're probably looking for that direct route a little bit more. Um, and then the pressure on the keeper. They're the areas that I would say that they, ne they, they created probably the game's best goal chance through Brian Carroll there, albeit you know through pressure on the keeper. So, in terms of creating goal chances, is there anything you'd like to see either either, either side do differently? Well, I, I do think if Gallon keeps kicking directly to Woods, 
they have an opportunity because he's won a ball on there. It's causing havoc in, in the defensive for Skullwara. What what they need to do is Oshin McIntyre maybe need to drop a wee bit deeper to, to protect that, but equally not just stay there to add the attack. Again, I, I keep talking about this man, Dylan Mulholland. If he keeps probing and keep moving and gets a bit of space, that's when Skullwara needs to kick in. That's his best. You have to give, like, Skullwara from Connor Graham, um, Shawnee Bradley, they're coming from deep. They're wanting the ball out wide. That's where the creativity coming from. Can we get the centre players on the ball? That's the big one for Skull Warriors this half. So those are the questions that the two management teams will ponder at half time. We'll be back with you in about 10 minutes. But uh, this game very much up in the balance. You'd have to say Skull Warrior Bunkrana have been the better side. But it hasn't shown as much on the scoreboard as they might like. Half time they lead by three points. Skull Warrior one goal and three points. Gallon Community School three points.
We're back for the second half here of the Masita Post Primary School's Senior D Football Final. John Glavy, the referee from Mayo, is ready to throw the ball up. I don't see at the moment any changes on either side. Uh, we'll keep no. an eye out here, but um, it looks definitely like they're as you were. Rory Woods come out this side. I see that uh, Gallon gone with a smaller full forward line as the ball goes up, breaks on the Bunkrana side. Good touch from Conor Grennan. Gets the ball away from Don Logo Brian. Gallon take possession here. Dinked ball forward from Eamon Maher. Eamon Maher into the full forward line. Touch for Sen and Hanafi here. Sen and Hanafi, if he gets straightened up, can be very, very effective. But that hand pass hasn't gone to hand. Ball is on the deck. This could be anyone's decision. Oh, really well done by Colm Egan. Comes out of traffic there. Forces the free. Yeah, I felt Senna Sen Hanneman was fouled in the first place and the referee hesitated to blow the free. They came out with, with the ball. He eventually got it, so I think it was a fair call. This is a very, very tough free kick now. Um, you're out about maybe 10 yards in from the sideline. Tricky angle. Wind coming behind. be interesting to see if Gallen are affected, if it's shooting into this goal, if they're also affected by going right of the posts here. This one looks like it might scrape over the bar. It looks like a good shout. It is a good shout. Excellent free kick. And suddenly we have a two-point ball game here in a game that for the first 20, 22 minutes did not feel like a two-point game. So Gallant started how they finished the, the first half. They picked it up. They wanted the early score. That's what their management was telling them at halftime. Get on the score sheet. Then we're in for a game. And, and the kick out again has been ricocheted. And um, Gallant comes away with the ball. Oh, that's really well Up. done again there by Shawnee Bradley. Like, yeah. he got in in the middle. I'll tell you, like, he looks stylish, he looks fast, he looks good on the ball, but he does the hard stuff as well. He does, and he's demanding, uh, he's demanding the ball. He's really wanting to take it to the game to Gallon, and, and, and certainly being uh, one of the star players in, in the first half and that setting the pavement for the second. And Gallon's away with the ball again. All those people who think soccer players are soft, he takes it personally and he wants to prove otherwise. That's what's going on there. Ball being flicked across now into midfield. Michael Spillan gets the ball across here. Gallant building down the left-hand side. It's a uh, ball dinked in. Oh, that's a very difficult ball for Colm Egan to try and win. Poor delivery there from him and Maher. Egan fights for it in fairness and forces the break. Really, like, he, he was not intent. Maher gets it at the second attempt. Egan, really, he wasn't entitled to do anything there. Again, Daniel, Daniel uh, McManaman had the ball. He's coming out with it. Maybe Skull World was a wee bit laboured on it, so Daniel could go on it and didn't support the player. And Egan put on a massive tackle, and again, a late, late hit by Don Logo, Brian, and Gallant getting the free. Skull World just need to watch her this one and get on the ball, or, or the referee will pull out card. We've seen him doing it earlier on with the two captains. Well, I have to say, no, I mean, and not saying it because the side it was, but of all the fouls we've seen, that to me was the closest to a yellow card, in that, like, it never had a chance of affecting the ball. Absolutely, <laughs> and it's letting things go. So, uh, good pressure there. Bradley again forcing the turnover. Ball spilled inside, but that was really well done. And uh, chance for Skullwear to break out here. Ball being carried out by Elliot Freel. There's plenty of bodies spilling forward. Freel takes it on again. A little bit of a tackle comes from behind. Surprised there was no free given there. And uh, ball is spilled. Pressure coming on on the gallon side. Luke Kelly forced the turnover. I think Freel was very unlucky not to get a whistle there. Uh, ball, oh, just laid inside. Hanafi trying to get it to Luke Kelly. If that hand pass had gone to hand, it had all opened the, the, the up. Tackling's been superb by both teams. Gallon is half is pressing, tackling a lot deeper up the field than, than press and setting back, and they're getting results from it. But excellent tackling from both teams. Well, uh, we saw more of it there. Again, it was Luke Kelly that came away with the ball. Luke Kelly, he's known as an attacking influence. He's a guy, he's. Uh, you know, he's definitely he's been recognised at county level. He's played minor with Offaly. He's a guy that's um, in a very, very small club, one of the smallest clubs in Offaly. Like, there's huge hope for him that he'll... Uh, they, and they have a reputation for producing forwards as well. Of course, Vinnie Claffey, James Coughlin, county inter-county inter inter corner forwards of great repute and great talent. He's actually coming back here to talk to Donald O'Brien this time, so uh, he might be given the card after all. Yeah, Donald was maybe a wee bit aggressive on him. He said we... Um, and maybe a, a further thought he's got it if maybe it is yellow mm. so after 34 minutes we have a yellow card for Don Logo Brian and uh, those who know me well know when I say things out loud like that that means I'm taking notes for the newspaper while I'm doing it uh, gotta, be do gotta be multitasking in this gig altogether Gallon float that free <laughs> kick inside towards James Wren uh, strong run here and ball back towards Luke Kelly I have to say Luke Kelly and Colm Egan two guys that weren't really involved now ball going in towards Egan here you know, as a corner forward, like those are very difficult balls to try and win right out in the corner flag. Yeah, and it just has to be retained possession. And seriously, Egan and Kelly has been very instrumental in the second half. There's a lot of tackling going on. Maybe a free there for Skull World. They'll take a free. They'll maybe hold on to two 
points lead and try to bowl something from here. But th- there is a change too in the sense that in the first half, Gallon weren't tackling high yeah. up the pitch like this. And they're being aggressive now, you know, and that's obviously came from management at half time. Why are we letting the ball come the other direction and really, really putting a press on Skullwara? Skullwara hasn't got the ball out this half. So a uh, good hand passing play here from Skullwara. Elliot Freel flicks that ball across and takes the return. And again, he's been hugely involved goes low but doesn't quite get it though I think there was a little bit of a touch there just got a spill on the ball uh, and Gallon looked to break it out here Lee Moore now in possession floats that one up high that's not a particularly good delivery there's momentum here you get the sense Gallon need to keep capitalising they, they need to capitalise and on a skull where it just again they got up far to the 45 so far and haven't haven't turned it over and, and, and they're at it again skull oh, oh Sen and Han if he's so unlucky there if that ball kept running for him um, I'm not sure John Glavy what his call is here he's saying he's throwing the ball up for some reason I'm not entirely sure why but um, like it was it, it was it was equal parts kind of a little bit of sluggishness on the part of Aaron Cleary to just wait for the ball to come to him yeah. but Sen and Hanafi got in there and like if that ball had kept rolling on the ground he was he was in that's it and a bit of tugging and pulling the jerseys I think if they get back to the football and the good football that they played in the first half we were in for a cracker of the second half Conor Grennan wins that throw ball flicks it in it's in another gallon hand it looks like Cubby Woods there but oh that's an excellent tackle on the skull where aside side Oshin and surely McIntyre. should be a free out here it is a free out on Oshin McIntyre uh, and we're going to come back for that free now which I presume he's going to say yeah you need to come back and take it from the right spot but uh Again, Oshin tried to rush at the skull where they were rushing maybe free kicks. They'd feel a bit, they feel the heat from Gallon and they're trying to rush balls where maybe if you settle a bit, retain possession, build the score, use the width of the field that they're doing, they can maybe get a point to score to settle them again because Gallon do look like they're on top at the minute. And it, it's funny because that was their strength in the first half. Yeah. It was yeah. control, it was patient. Yeah. They were generating shots. I mean, the, the fault in the first half, you didn't see those passes yeah. in the first half. Like a ridiculous ball played on by Dylan Mulholland for a, a guy that played um, county football. He just needed to steady himself again, look for the score, bullet. He's working hard off the ball and giving juice for that. But let's, let's be smart for a score world's perspective. That's the base of me. Hey, you're, you're entitled to it. Like, that's, the be- that's the beauty of GA is that we are, we are who we are, we are where we're from. <laughs> you don't give away with it. We're all right. We, we won't fight each other here. We'll be all good. We'll be all good. <laughs> So Gallon working that ball out, Sean Bradley there tangling a little bit with, uh, it's hard to tell on the Gallon side, I think it might be Luke Fitzgerald, ball inside here towards Lee Moore, tackle coming in from Dylan Mulholland, but Moore gets away from him, and Gallon get the chance to work it back into the centre towards Conor Grennan, and out here towards Woods. So again, Gallon now playing as they did in the first, playing as uh, Skullwira did in the first half, working that ball across, ro- uh, Brian Carroll dinks it into the corner but um, not sure of the value of that ball either all you can really do is recycle it come back inside it's Luke Kelly in possession now steps inside well trying to wrong foot the skull wearer defence and uh, your microphones will be picking up some uh, animated shouts from the crowd there as people start to realise this game is very much in the melting pot Conor Grennan flicks that ball inside oh scoring chance going to drop short oh well won there in the back yeah, line brilliantly done it was uh, Elliot Freel was there he read the danger really really well he saw the ball was dropping short and it'd be very easy wrong foot yourself as well when you're keeping one eye in the goal in that situation yeah we've seen the, the management emanated down the lane and, and a lot of the shouting and roaring but it was to get Elliot Freel back, back into the position of a full back and recovered and certainly paid off and uh, I'm sure uh, Kevin Campbell <laughs> would have pride him of seeing him working back and making that hard run where he was able to turn the ball over because other than that that ball was going to the net and that's an old, mm. almost mm. a goal, goal opportunity for Gallon. so we're going to come back here now the ball was knocked out over the end line and it's a 45 and it's actually more central than we thought as uh, Senan Hanafi mm. chips it into Fitzgerald his club colleague Hanafi gets it back off the left foot doesn't look like it's going to turn enough that one's wide yep, it's gone left to the wide and it's the first maybe the first wide in that side there today that the it left. is it is to the best of my knowledge mm-hmm. so uh, so the short kick out is conceded there Stephen McNulty's able to get it away as Elliot Freel floats it out towards Sean McLaughlin I mean you talked about Sean McLaughlin carrying forward getting into good scoring positions he's coming back very very deep in this half <coughs> If Sean's looking for the ball, trying to lead the way, maybe it's not the right thing to do. Just stay in your position, let the team bowl, settle on it, try to play the clock, 
give yourselves a bit of confidence to get on the ball, to get it. So it's good where it hasn't got a shot off here, and we're going into nine, ten minutes of the second half already. So a good slick hand pass in here. The ball has worked towards O'Sheen McIntyre. Aaron Cleary got a flick to him. He's been. Uh, it looks surely he's been held in the tackle. I don't think Connor can have too many complaints about that. He had two arms around him. Again, I think you have to be fouled twice before you get a free from this ref. <laughs> yeah. And that's for both teams. He was yeah. hesitating to blow the free. And I think it's just, you know, it's Sean's taking maybe a short. No. So we have the first substitution on the skull. We're on the uh, Gallon Community School side. And coming into the side is Gavin Egan. Uh, no relation, I assure you. Michael Spillane is the man making way. Uh, Spillane, bit of a physical presence, won a few kickouts. So, like, when kickouts are so important here, it's an interesting switch to make. Now, obviously, uh, Gavin Egan, I know, will bring plenty of energy up and down the pitch, and that, that will be important in the closing stages. But I wouldn't have said Spillane was having a poor game, though. He, he wasn't having a poor game, but I think it's a running game and a type of running league and fresh legs on. I think that's the uh, thinking behind management to have plenty of legs running and a shot off. Dylan Mulholland floats that ball in. Oh, that's an excellent punch clear. Really well done by Brandon Delaney on the, on the gallant side. Uh, because there was danger there like it, he couldn't just break it down he had to get it a good way away from his own goal and it ends up being a gallant sideline ball albeit one where it's difficult to work the ball out ball inside towards Mannion here um, flicked back and we're again gallant still trying to work it out it's very very tight and they're under pressure and there's the turnover potentially a free in not given high shot coming in here fr uh, from the full forward from Billy Duffy just drops short Gallon get the chance to carry out now uh, ball being flicked out by the hand pass Eamon Maher worked out first touch here for Gavin Egan Gavin Egan you can see that turn of pace gets the ball back inside yeah, Billy Duffy shot off. It wasn't on. Again, retained possession. He's got a turnover. you got to get the ball. Oh, high ball in. It could be a chance for Colm Egan in behind. He has gone in behind. Oh, what, what? a clearance off the goal line. That is incredible. It looked like Colm Egan couldn't help but score. But somebody got back there to cover and couldn't identify That man, Oshin uh, McIntyre. Oshin McIntyre, the playing the third midfielder in defensive, worked his socks off to get back. He made a 40 yard run to get back. He's from the New Padre Club. He's a, he's a Donegal in the 20s. You see why he's there. And STP Barrett will be admired by the work that he's done there to keep Skullwara in the game. It was a long ball. Colm Egan knew he was second favourite to a high ball that was dropping. He took a chance on the defender, misreading the bounce. Got in behind, stepped inside the keeper. OK, he never had control. But what a recovery from McIntyre in an All-Ireland final. We talk about scores. We talk about the likes of Shawnee Bradley's goal in the first half. I mean... That is huge. That feels like a the very important these moment. Are, these are really what you see if it was an inter-county senior football. They'd be playing that move years and years again of stopping a ball from going on the net. Superb work. His father, Damien, and him very well. From He's originally a Limit Valley Wolfhound man, but very much steeped in Donegal football. He logistics with the Donegal minor team. He worked with myself with under-20s and involved with Declan Boner when he was a senior manager. And They're just steeped in GA football. And I'm sure, look, uh, with the Derry connections and the Donegal connections, Oshin really established himself that he's a true Donegal man in school. We're a man there. Well, I'll tell you, if, if he never does anything else, that contribution alone will, uh, will be remembered for a long time to come. Yep. Assuming, of course, the result continues yeah. you know with uh, Skull we're in front mm. obviously a lot of football still to be played here we're waiting Colm Egan took a hard hit there um, obviously uh, uh, obviously McIntyre was all eyes on the ball and getting it away there was no malice or anything yeah. like that but uh, they seem to be free for Skull we're out here after that play um, so there must be a pole or something I don't think anything trivia but they've got the possession they've got the possession ball is floated out towards Don Logo Brian flicks back the return good play here again from McIntyre McIntyre gets the hand pass away to Elliot Freel. I have to say, Elliot Freel, like he's just handled so much ball and it's so assured, <laughs> it just goes to the right man every time. Very, very slick working with Barry Ward in the Donegal Miners, and I'm sure Barry would be delighted to see the finals out of the way and stuff because he's a big player for the Donegal Miners. Well, you can see why, because once upon a time, you know, minor and schools football, there was a lot of overlap, obviously, as minor has gone to under 17. Here's Freel again now, picks up that breaking ball, forced the spill. Can he get his name on the score sheet? He can get his name on the score sheet. Well, that's definitely the opposite of commentator's curse. We normally... When, when you need a player in a skull where in that position, the chips were down, Gallon was coming at them, wave after wave, missed goal opportunity. Somebody like a star like Elliot Freel, he's a big one for the future. Um... To, to come up and, and kick a big score like that. He was in the play earlier on before that before that point came. So, Really well done by Brian Carroll here and brought to the ground. Again, 
it's funny. I, I mean, is that not a black card? Not trying to be neutral, but he, like, it, the, the defender was beaten and he just grabbed the ankle and yeah. pulled him down. It, it, it let <sighs> stuff like that go and maybe blow an easier one, you know? You know, and like when you compare that with like both Sean McLaughlin and Conor Grennan are carrying yellow cards here and are struggling to carry yellow cards. Oshin McIntyre again Oshin. turned that ball over, going out for a 45, but got a crucial hand on there to stop a, a safe a score opportunity for Gallon. I want to mention a few people tuned in very early this morning in New York, Keelan McLaughlin <laughs> from Moncran and Paul McDade in the Paul McDade's bar, the game live in a bar at 9 o'clock in New York and what do you say out of school football, so when I wish the two men well, they're texting me here over the phone. Well, there you go, it used to be the case that you used to have to go to the bar in New York to watch like Ulster Championship or Leinster Championship or something like yeah. that, now you do it for schools football, <laughs> it's uh, God bless the circle of life, I mean... <laughs> The, ir the irony being the bar in New York, you wouldn't be allowed in it if you were of school age. <laughs> Sennon Hanafi floats that 45 in, could break any direction. Oh, it's broken on the Skullwira side. Ball out here towards Leo Kelly. Uh, Skullwira get the hand pass away. Oh, well controlled there by Aaron Cleary. I thought he could lose it, and surely that's a free out. It looked like a foul, not given. Uh, chance for Lee Moore here. Lee Moore, is there is there a bit of an overlap? There isn't. He's carried it into the tackle. He's leading it wide. He's... It, it looks like he's kind of lost mm. the impetus again and the ball has been turned over there. It's been well done by Daniel McMenamin. Ah, uh, McMenamin that, that, that was did really brilliant, well. That was a brilliant defending by the two knee, um, knee Padraigis keen men, Daniel McMenamin and, and Oshin McIntyre, getting their body in. It, double up was on, being patient and got, got their hand in and turned the ball over well. Skullwara now on attack again. It does feel like Skullwara have kind of come through the storm a little bit. Is this a brilliant run from Andrew Davidson? Driving forward, flicks it across towards Don Logo Brian. Puts that one up. I think that's inside the post. It looks like it's inside the post. That is, uh, that is a score of the day. And again, it came from the, the knee Podrick men. Link up the field. One, two, pass and have it, have it over the bar. And a great, great score by Don Logo Brian. He just missed that one. Absolutely, but you could see the power in Andrew Davidson's run as well. It was straight, it was exactly what you want. Ball over the top again. Can they get the flick away in towards Moore? Moore gets, oh, leaves it just behind Luke Kelly. Ball back outside here towards Carl. Pull on the jersey. Surely should be a free, not needed. Ball tapped over the bar by Carl. You get the sense that probably Gallon needed that to stay in the game as well because the momentum had shifted back the other way. That's it. It's up and down now. Football, we're really going into a real crucial 15 minutes of football. I'm looking forward to see how he's going to play out. Um, again, that high ball and that demanding ball. Gallon make a return from that. There's two possible goal opportunities going to come from it. And it is really causing serious trouble for Skull where uh, that direct ball going in. So it seems like, again, I have misidentified the Gallon numbers as I see number 18 on the sideline here now, Rory <laughs> Woods. It must have been Owen Grennan that was wearing that jersey. I'll tell you, I won't thank them for wearing these jerseys at all. They're not making my life easy in the slightest. Moving numbers around. That's shock, shocking behaviour altogether. Cute, cute, Andrew cute Davidson, awfully, man. Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, now, now, Andrew Davidson feeds that ball forward. Billy Duffy looking for the diagonal ball. Oh, it's just, just too far in front of Sean McLaughlin. You can see what he was trying to do. It was a brilliant idea to see it coming in. Sean McLaughlin was really working hard. Just maybe overkicked it a wee bit. Didn't judge it very well. Scott Ware got that ball to go four up. It would have been... Um, a big score for them but look again this game's up and down this is good to see this is what school football's about it's come alive that's the important thing well that was it look it's big moments make big games and we've had that big moment so uh, it is Rory Woods coming into the game Rory Woods replaces uh, Colm Egan has gone off still clearly feeling the effects uh, Colm had been scoring very very freely the whole way through this championship very young player still one if not two more years of school's football ahead of him and uh, had been a standout player in this championship so far, but uh, hadn't done a whole lot wrong here this afternoon, it must be said. Oh, how about that for a high catch? That's a great mark. That's an excellent mark there from Gavin Egan. So, a bit of a pull on the jersey here from Brian Carr, driven forward. Luke Kelly gets it out here. Possible. Oh. Ball comes in from Kelly. Kelly with the shot. Oh, well yeah. won by McMenamin in the back line. Really well done. <laughs> Daniel Menon's having a good second half. He's putting a lot of tackles, picking up a lot of ball, working really, really hard. He got on two and three crucial balls there. It was important. And it's Dylan Mulholland now on the ball is trying to do a piece of magic. Dylan Mulholland gets that ball, works it well back inside towards Fiona Reardon, or Reardon across towards Cleary. Carroll gets the hit in, but Cleary still gets the ball away towards Bradley, who's kind of come out of it a little bit. Uh, Bradley gets that, tries to get across towards Elliot Freel, can't quite do it. Luke Kelly, who uh, Luke Kelly has really come into it, didn't feature in the game in the first half, but he's getting on a lot of ball here in the second. He's trying to take a game to score, and he stepped up a lot. 
sending Hanafi lovely slip inside Leo Kelly Hanafi tries to keep going he's been fouled uh, referee says advantage being played though it's going to be a correct, very tricky free from out there correct decision the freeze at the pulling the score was like it's going to be a, t- a tough free but uh, you know it was three against one out there I, th- I can see two subs warming up here for Skull Wara. Jay Bradley, the u- older brother, not the younger, but older brother of Shawnee Bradley, wear number 17 on his back. And then we've got Killian McLehenny from the Knee Padre Club, um, wear number 18. I think they're going to be introduced. I see Kevin Campbell was given last minute instruction. These are runner players. They do, these lads run and they carry a lot of ball. I think that's the thinking behind it. Well, that's absolutely it. And equally, I see David Heffernan on the Gallant Community School side. He's lined up and ready to come in as well. Uh, so we'll see in a minute that free gets floated in it looks like it's going to drop short Grennan goes up for it oh that's an Andrew excellent Davidson. catch Andrew Davidson lovely catch and uh, oh but it's come back out on the gallon side high shot comes in looks like it's gone wide and it is gone wide on the left hand side so, so skull were in that half was missing the right hand side gallon's missing the left hand side just an interesting stat to the, the ball and these subs are going to be make, will be going to be made now Connor, so it's uh, Fio- Fiona Reardon who makes way for uh, Killian McElhenney yeah and uh, it is Jamie, Mc- Jamie McCauley who's stepping aside as, um, as Jay Bradley comes into the team. So they're the two subs on the Skullwira side. And we'll see in a second who David, Hef- David Heffernan goes in for. David Heffernan replacing Brandon Delaney. <laughs> so nine minutes to play. All-Ireland title at stake. Three points in it. Skullwira obviously in the better position. Management seem very, very unhappy there. there off the ball stuff. Maybe Jay Bradley getting the nose mark a wee bit and him getting to know, know each other very well. And Kieran Thompson and, uh, and <laughs> Kevin Campbell were not happy with the linesman on that. I didn't see it under my nose, but something went on. High ball out. Oshin McIntyre goes up for it, but it's broken down. James Wren wins the breaking ball. Luke Fitzgerald dinks it forward. Chance now for Gallon. Try and engineer something. Early ball in. Chance here for Woods. Woods now gets the flick inside. Another chance for Luke Kelly. A lot of traffic there. Kelly comes in. Comes on to the left foot. Floats it up. Puts it between the posts. And we're down to a two-point ball game. And there is no question in the second half, and I say the second half, Luke Kelly has really made a world of difference. He's certainly really stepped up to the game in the second half. Really bring it there for Gallon. He's the one player they're going to and demanding the game and really taking control of it. Gallon's back in possession. With Con- a Connor leader. Brennan wins that kick out. Ball inside. Oh, Woods here. Is he going to kind of go straight? Gets it outside towards Kelly again. Ball deflected off a hand and over the bar. That could have gone anywhere off the deflection. I, I think Connor Graham got a hand in there to send it over the bar, so it did. So Connor Graham got a, a, a good hand in there. One point game. This kick out is crucial, and that's where the scores are coming from. We're into one hell of an eight minutes. I'll tell you, the drama is building up here now. Uh, we mightn't be leaving this place for a while. The potential for extra time is there. Short kick out retained on the skull. We're aside. Ball flicked across here. It was uh, Conor Graham that won the short kick out, got it to Ushin McIntyre, and Skull Weir with the chance to settle here. We're back within one point. It hasn't been one point since uh, early in the game. Of course, Skull Weir had a good had a couple of points on the board early on. Ball worked inside here towards Don Logo Brian. Still full of running, as you might expect. Oh, but he misplaces that hand pass. Turnover on the Gallon side. Here's Conor Grennan now. Conor Grennan carries the ball forward, looking up. He certainly won't mind taking the hit. Very physical player, well able to hold the ball in the tackle. Ball across towards Carl here. Floats it in over the top. Oh, the defender misjudges it. Chance for Rory Woods here. Rory Woods tries to get it inside towards Kelly again. I don't know that the hand pass was on, but Kelly manages to win it. Brian Carl, ball inside. Opportunity here for Gavin Egan. Now across towards Lee Moore. Lee Moore throws it up with the right boot. Is it over the crossbar? Umpire says yes. We have a draw game here. There is seven minutes left and this one is right in the melting pot right, right in the melting point Skull were a sort they did enough with Daniel uh, McManaman putting a tackle in but they just stopped and waited and Gallon got back on the ball excellent score excellent score to bring their, their team back into it high ball goes up here Gavin, e- uh, Gavin Egan is underneath it wins the ball is broken down and he wins it flicks that ball backwards ball across towards Jake Maher now Gallon they have the momentum Luke Fitzgerald oh that's a sloppy hand pass we saw how a sloppy hand pass can cost you at one end can Skull Wirra make it count at the other Sean McLaughlin works the ball out first touch here for Killian McElhenney McElhenney floats that one forward oh jeez Conor Graham mightn't thank him for that but he did well oh it just was an unnecessary hand pass. It, for, it invited the hit. 
invited to hit, and a lot of loopy hand passes that's going to encourage a slap to come down. It's coming from both teams today. They're just a hand pass that's not as slick. They're kicking, maybe their tackling's been good. Well, they're hand passing and passes forward hasn't been. Now they're, they're both teams are on the edge. They're going defensively. They're calling each other back. Long ball in now. Again, it's Kelly. Gets the layoff in towards Eamon Maher. Eamon Maher carries it in. Oh, the hand pass inside. I don't know that that was on. Got it. Uh, he, he, he obviously didn't want to shoot himself, but you got the sense he needed to in that yeah, situation. Absolutely. A fisty over the bar when you get in that position too. Get your team a point up and work it from there. And they, They've done that. Skull World is now in the tack. And again, this is where you retain possession, you build your scores, and that's where you come out. And it's really down to the wire. And it's who's got the nerve now to see this. Two quality teams playing here. It's real well matched competition over carrying there by Andrew Davidson. The Skull Warrior crowd are not happy on that. Um, I felt earlier the referee let um, yeah. gla uh, Gallon's midfielder away with a couple of Conor steps Gray, on it, yeah. so he's, he's been very pickety coming under the end. The Skull Warrior crowd are certainly not happy with that call, I'm sure. And there's a very uh, short restart, I always say it, but is there any rule in GA more ignored than a free must travel 13 yeah. metres? I yeah, don't that's think it. It. And again, the referee maybe balancing the books by giving Skull Warrior a free out there. <laughs> I see uh, Andrew Cle uh, or Aaron Cleary, I should say, down stretching the legs with cramp. I'd say they're feeling it, but at the other hand, adrenaline will certainly come into it at this stage. Oh, that, that solo breaks loose. Looked like handled on the ground. I think... Oshin uh, Oshin got away with that one now. As you say, there's a... There's, uh, there's controversial calls going both ways, but it's a glorious chance for Skull Weary here. Oh, the hand pass yeah, the just hand too far in front of Donal yeah. O'Brien. It was a glorious opportunity, but Killian McElhenney's hand pass, it was just a yard too far forward because otherwise it was a nailed on score. On oh. the ground, on the ground. Fundamental mistakes are being called out here now as we go on to the last four minutes. Oh, I'll tell you, there is no That's tension it. quite like it. An All-Ireland title, several of these players will go on to bigger things with their counties and their clubs, but it's the simple truth of it, Some, several of them won't. Chance here now for Jay Bradley. Jay Bradley cuts inside, looks to try and back heel. Shot comes in from it's Billy 45. Duffy, but it... It must be a 45, Aye. I would imagine. And the referee is signalling exactly that, yeah. Billy Duffy played the ball into Jay Bradley. Jay Bradley didn't control it the first time. Again, that's a fist over the bar. No need to go for the goal. Send your team down. And then Billy Duffy's shot came off the ankle that leads it out to the 45. Big kick for Sean McLaughlin. You see what he did in the first half. He kicks the freeze for his senior team in the club. He's really going to step up and see, can he do the captaincy role? It's a big, big kick. This is the Dave Alfred work now. Can it pay off? Well, there you go. Well, I have to say, it's a, look, the, the, the only thing I'll say is that these kicks are very, very difficult in this world of pressure. Mm. The kick to go one in front is very different to the kick when you are one behind and need to level. So Absolutely. he has that. So he'll, he'll step back. I won't he, ask the question as to where he got the yellow socks from or what their connection I is. haven't a clue, but I wouldn't let him train in a minute or so. <laughs> there you go. Couldn't be, do, couldn't be doing such things. So he stands up here. This has the potential to be very, very decisive. McLaughlin steps up, steps into it. It's close to the left-hand post. It's wide of the left-hand post. It's a, it's a, it was a good kick. It was just everything but the accuracy, and it just drifted to the left. Sean would be disappointed. And I'd say if there was the width of a football in it, now it definitely wasn't far away either. Skullworth so. pushing well up on Gallon here. They're trying to get the ball back. And this is where Gallon's at their strength when they do go long at the midfield. And feel looking the ball. for the long ball. Carl is jumping Aaron for Cleary. it. Oh, Aaron Cleary. What a catch. That's a high pressure catch. Into McLaughlin here now. McLaughlin being pushed wide by Gavin Egan. I have to say, Gavin Egan has made an impact since he's come in too. Now, he's definitely been a significant substitution. Worked really hard, so he has. He's worked really hard throughout. And Ellie Freeland, another player that worked really hard out, to, out today too and pushing forward and being instrumental at, at Skullworth's attack. So uh, we're ball being flicked across here. Cleary, the, of course, the man who came up with the possession with that fine high catch, floats it in towards Dylan Mulholland. Dylan Mulholland hasn't had a chance to square up his shoulders and get running towards goal. Doesn't look like it's going to happen here either. Instead decides he's going to have a big punt from distance. The diving block there from Brian Carr. Lee Moore picks up the uh, picks up the breaking ball. It's up against the touchline. Can Gallen keep it in play? They can. They try and work it ball down here. It looks like Rory Woods fighting for it. It's going to break. It's going to break on the Gallen side. It's... Uh, uh, Luke Fitzgerald has come forward can they get the ball inside 
Fitzgerald wins it on the sideline. Oh, floats that up. That's another hospital ball. And there's that man, McIntyre, again. Gets the yes, fist certainly in. really one of the star men for today for a school worth respect of like yourselves, Regan and Kelly, but certainly working really, really hard. And Skull, oh, it's a free in. It's a free in. Is he give, I, I'm not sure, did he say a dodgy hand pass there or charging? It was uh, off no, the, hand ground. On the ground. Hand hands on, on the ground. ground. I was I was I was looking at the runners as they were coming out, and I was saying that I was watching the play. I didn't actually see that, which is something a commentator he, uh, should never. You know, to, he blew up a no, number uh, hand on hand on the ground with the ball. I don't know if it was or not. It's uh, difficult. It's certainly a real big opportunity for Gallon to go a point ahead in this all, all in the final. It's factually gifted to them and. Look at, uh, I do think a referee for that decision may, may, may give Scover another, another chance as we push into injury time. It's, it's one of those that look, if it's given in the first minute of the game, you don't bat an eyelid, yep. but when it's given with 59.42 on the clock, it's a different change on the gallon side. Lee Moore is coming off the pitch and Rory Dunican is stepping into the fray. So uh, he won't be on for a long time, but he's on for a very significant time. As we four minutes of injury four, time being four called. Minutes, four minutes of injury time. So I'll tell you, uh, I'm not one of the players. I'm a long time. Uh, when I was in the school, it was St. Sarans and St. Joseph Secondary School. It's since amalgamated to become Gallon. But uh, the free comes in from Hanafi. You can tell by the reaction. You can tell by the shout. The ball has gone between the posts. And for the first time in the game, Gallon Community School have the lead. What a time to take a lead just right in the injury time. They're going to go defensive. I do think there's four minutes. There's still a bit more football to play. It's about what team gets in the ball. And it is Gallon. Now they're out oh, of the Oh, Luke attack. Fitzgerald wins and the kick out. Ball inside. Chance for Luke Kelly now. Kelly inside. Oh, push in the back. The referee oh. let that one go. He's let it go. And he and gave a, a free out. out. It's a poor refereeing decision. In fairness, Gallon should have had a free end there to go two points ahead. A lifeline for Skullwara. And Shawnee Bradley takes a heavy Shawnee hit. Shawnee Bradley takes and gets the a hard free. hit. He knew it was coming uh, and he, he knew it was coming and he took the hit. But that more than balanced it because I'll be honest, it, it was it, it, it was a certain free end to Gallon to two points ahead. Well, the, the only free. question was it could even have been a penalty, such yeah. was the location. But either way, Gallon secured it. And Skullwara oh. get another free. Um, to be biased and I say gallon people must be angry at this <laughs> well look there's a, there's a few going both ways I can certainly say that and definitely uh, you know we, we'll, we'll try not to be too one-eyed again the hand pass must be handled on the ground and is handled okay. on the ground gallon have all the momentum at this stage it's a game you think back it was 1-3 to a point you just didn't see this coming no it didn't and again it's hand on the ground fundamental mistakes has been happening in the last five or six minutes both teams are nervous with it they got a lifeline for a handy free they should have got a proper one and they didn't get it and so Gallant they're playing a dangerous game here back in their own half trying to work it out oh that looks like players been turned, swallowed up turned over this could be anything player dives on the ball there referee says play on carry on ball worked Dylan inside Dylan came out with the ball with Oshin great McIntyre has it Ball flicked inside. McLaughlin now. McLaughlin, it's a very, very tight angle. Aaron Cleary flicks it across. Oh, it's been let bounce in the area. It was Jay Bradley was there, but he just couldn't quite gather it. I don't think he even, ex I don't think he even I expected it. I, I didn't think it was coming. That's all it was, and his back was to the goal, so there, it wasn't the right ball to play to Jay Bradley. Oh, ball flicked out. There's open country here now for Gallon to break out. It was it was Rory Woods. Ball flicked on towards Luke Kelly. Luke Kelly, how much running has he? He has a strong man up against him and Andrew, Andrew Davidson. Davidson. Good tackle Davidson. by Davidson. Ah, Davidson has Excellent done really well there. Davidson. Really, really well. And he's given enough time to show him the line and to push him out so the Skull Warrior lads can, can drop back. We don't know if there's going to be a happy ending for Skull Warrior here or what's going to happen, but Davidson Ball's did really one well there. and a half to get on the score sheet. And the free out I felt you know Andrew Davidson is a superb air again Gallon had an opportunity to put this game to bed Andrew Davidson showed him showed him showed him the line showed him the line so it was an opportunity for the rest of his teammates to get back in and filter in as they come on attack Dylan Mahullen is working hard but coming too deep he needs to get into the scoring range his school needs him in the scoring range he's their main marksman he's had a good day today he's got to get into the scoring range if he wants to lift it well, Dylan Mulholland, he, now, here he is exactly taking the ball on at midfield. You get the sense Luke Fitzgerald is not too worried about fouling him out here. Ball comes across towards McIntyre. Again, the hand pass. Uh, that's, been, that's been the team. They just haven't been able to retain the hand passes. Oh, tackle from behind must surely be a free a out. Card. It is. And probably should be a black card by rule. I don't He's know. He's coming for the book. He's coming for the book. I think it's a black card. I'd say we can't have an awful lot of time left at this stage. Pretty, pretty 33-36 so Gallon if they play their cards right if they manage to retain this free kick you get the sense that uh, if they can just retain possession a little bit longer 
It really is. It's a remarkable turnaround when you think back to how this game was going in the early stages. Obviously, Sorry. like, look, you know, as you say, schools football can always change, but uh, I, I, I'd be lying if I said I saw this. Gallon came out the second half and really pressed goal, where I pressed him deep, stopped him from coming into their own half of the ball. It took us goal, we're almost eight, nine minutes to get even a shot off. So, really, Gallon went out and really pressurised him, and that was the platform for where the, where the position they're in now at the minute. If, that, if it can continue it on. So that man, Luke Kelly, uh, we'll have to have a man of the match conversation in a minute, but he'll definitely be in the mix. But uh, he's been taken off there, and Daniel Kelly has gone in instead of him. Luke Kelly took a hit. Gallon have retained possession here. Gavin Egan flicks that ball across. Can they retain possession? They can retain possession. It's Carl now. Gets it across towards Grennan. Grennan just walks forward. Calm as you like. Big, long, loping stride. Will the captain get a chance to put his name on the score sheet? He puts his left boot to it. This Dropping. one's going to drop short. It could drop anywhere. Elliot what Green. hands from Elliot Freel. I have to say, I know it's custom to give the man a match the winning side. I don't know if there's been an individual better than him out there. No, the, uh, Elliot Freel is a superb game. Excellent for, for a county minor. Still a, uh, maybe a couple of years younger than a lot of the boys. Oshin McIntyre had a real ser serious game for Skull War. Uh, and Skull War's perspective between them two. And I know you've... Um, looking at Luke Kelly, oh, Colm Egan, you know, it's a lot of good players out there, a lot of good futures for players out there. And there and you go, over. there's the final whistle. The roar will tell you it's been an absolutely remarkable afternoon here at Markovic Park in Sligo. The Messina Post Primary School Senior D final defeat in the most heartbreaking of fashion for school wear at Buncrana. They had this game in their control in the first half. But point by point by point, Gallon Community School, they started by turning things around defensively. They worked their way back into it. They started getting some possession and they took the lead once and it was the only time they needed. That's it, Gunnan, and giving it a silly free off the ground and you know, and, and all those horror stories come with it. In fairness, they should have had a free after that. The ref didn't give it. Maybe he's balancing the books on it. It is heartbreaking for Skull where a lot of work went into these players by um, Kevin Campbell, Kieran Thompson and Nee Podrick, Burt and my own club, of course, Bunkrana. And look at their bright stars. Um, it's disappointing to lose an All-Ireland final and any All-Ireland final. Fair play to Gallon. They were on the rocks. They stuck with the task. They came out in the second half. They were the better team. They pushed really, really hard. Definitely. And um, looking at, I had no qualms to give Luke Kelly man of the match here today. I, I, th I think so. The, mm. the, the the commentary verdict here definitely Luke Kelly. But it, it, it was just it was a. You'd say to yourself, whatever chance Gallon might have had, they probably needed to open it out, have a free score in the second half. Instead, we've had a second half to finish six points to two. Yeah, and 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 that's the way it, that's the way it's played out. When what I, what I would say about like it was a good second half maybe hand passing wasn't slick as it should be for that standard football with young lads the kicking was good the tackling was immense both teams showed real real hunger for it it was delighted for a, a school like school where it reached an All-Ireland final Gallant had previous experience under the vocational schools but look at they would go home disappointed tonight they're going to go home disappointed they're hurt by that because they felt that it was there and sitting here in the commentary felt that, that it was there for them silly mistake on it they should have been maybe slicker passes get scores inside but when it came to direct football Gallon did show that at times and could have cut more scores if it wasn't for the massive work by Oshin McIntyre and Andrew Davison who really pushed um, defenders out the wing to allow Scott Warren to get set up but congratulations to Gallon no qualms they worked their socks off the second half to get this All Ireland title, the Rice Cup, back to Offaly. Well, that was it, and I, I, I really think a huge part of it as well was that you saw that in the first half, the control skull where I had. They were mm. knocking the ball around from side to mm. side. A huge element was we, and, and like we even referred to Gallon leaving a lot of guys back, giving the skull where at that time on the ball. They changed that. I know it's an easy thing to say, you know, and sometimes just desperation and the fact the clock running out will force it. But there really was a change in a change in focus, attacking high up, forcing yeah. the tackles higher up in the and second and half. And give Gallon credit for doing that. They're willing to get really up in the field, really cause skull were a decision where they had a lot of time in the ball in the first half. They weren't getting that inch to breathe to move the ball. We've seen how many hand passes turned over. They're going there. They weren't slick enough. A bit of slickness from that. They could have went on and pushed on a point or two. The better team in the second half then the more shots off as I said Skull were waited to 9-10 minutes before they got the first shot off in the second half and that shows you the work was done with Gallon when they came out at half time we're going to work these boys and they worked them really really, really hard of course it's disappointing to see the principal there Rose and Grant she's um, very much passionate sportswoman for the school she's driving on all, all the sports in school and, 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 and look congratulations on reaching the final it's commiseration that they didn't go on and win it 
But I say, look, if a school keeps investing in what they're doing, we the support of their club, school where uh, Clana College and Bunkrana, they'll all come back and they will compete in all Ireland and Ulster titles, which is great for any show in general. Of course, and I mean, equally too, I have to say, like, uh, you know, I, I, I was at that final in 2011 when Joe Maher, manager today, was involved. He would have set up a goal for Aaron McDonough, and there was a lot of similar traces in, uh, th- in, that, in that particular game against um, it was a school from West Cork. I can't remember who it was at the time, but it was the same thing. The, like, the first four points of the game went to the Cork side. Gallon gradually worked their way back into it. They got a bit of defensive control. A side that looked like they were going to score a lot ended up with 1 8 on the board at the end. And it was a l- very similar here today. It was just yeah. patient, keep doing the right things. There was never a sense of panic about Gallon. And, and, and that's what I admire about Joe Mahar and Barry down the line. They just kept it calm. They didn't get carried away. They look at the, they, they stepped at each outcome and they were encouraging the lads on there. They were annoyed, like uh, Skull were about a couple of referee indecisions. We won't go into that because I think the books was balanced at the end uh, anyway. So so it was. But look at, congratulations to Gallon once again. It's uh, been a fantastic second half. It, they took a wee while to discover, to find each other out. Um, very cautious. Gallon being very defensive earlier on in the game. But when they grew in the game, they grew and they came at Skull were, uh, and that's where they came out the, the better in the second half. So there you go, the destination of the uh, Edmund Rice, Cup, uh, uh, Edmund Ignatius Rice, to give him his full title, the Edmund Ignatius Rice Cup, uh, has been decided and it's going to Gallon Community School. Two years ago they won a Leinster title, they came up against a very, very strong Belmullet side in the semi-final at that stage, fell just short on that occasion. Uh, today, they've, a lot of those players were still involved here this afternoon, they took those lessons on board. And it really was like it, w- it was a thrilling, it was a fascinating game to watch. We have a lot of people who equate good football with high scoring football. Like, to me, that wasn't defensive, it was good defending that made the difference. Yeah, brilliant tackling, good defending, both, but the energy level to see young lads up and down the field really want them not want to give up, and you have to admire that. I'm looking forward to see the likes of maybe Jake Maher, Luke Kelly, definitely Colin Egan, all making awfully senior teams, see how they progress on it, and you know. It's good for a county to win a school's final. No matter what division it is, it gives momentum forward. It carries it on your backdrop of your under 20s a few years ago, and you're gonna uh, you're gonna add to it. Equally, Elliot Freel from Bunkrana um, with the county minors, Oshin McIntyre, um, Jamie McCauley, all involved with with county squad. Sean McLaughlin involved with minor, probably involved with county under 20s next year. So look, pathways are good for these lads. It's good for our area within its own peninsula. Use a small area in Offaly, and it's just flying the flag for football and it's credit for both schools it's credit to the coaches in both schools and schools to support that and support GA football within the school these competitions are very important for schools like Skullwara and Gallon and uh, you know it's, it's great it's great to see more of them I can see more finals being contested by both teams if they keep putting in the work well, that's it exactly. Look, this is a it's it's a, it's a unique environment because a lot of these guys, particularly in small clubs, they might grow up, they might play, you know, under twelve, under fourteen, under sixteen, minor, and they might have the one coach the whole way, the same way through. You know, you come into schools, you know, you might have a little bit of help from the county GPO, but in general, you have different voices. You know, whether it is the likes of Joe Maher, ex Offaly player on the Gallon side, Richie Fox, ex Offaly player on the Gallon side, or Kieran Thompson, Kevin Cassidy on the other side. You know, like the it, it's different voices and it's something new which is only good for lads, for lads a- developing absolutely and mix it in with other players and get you ready for the f- for the county standards previously in Inishone we used to amalgamate all the schools to compete in the Division 2 the McLaren Cup or the Ranafast Cup now we're getting the schools to stand alone and to compete in Ulster which is a great step forward and the work going on and I know from speaking to both clubs Neve Podrick and Bert and my own club Bun Cranor, we're in this together for our schools we're all supporting them yes we're rivalry on the field and all that goes with it but when it comes to school football in a shown is united in that front and, and the back of it and, and it's great to see and, and a long way at last but that's down to the club again getting really involved in the schools school teachers like Kevin Campbell and Kieran Thompson stepping up to the plate not from the area miles away from the area coming in and making an effort Kevin Campbell an ex Donegal County hurler doing massive work to come in and take the football team along with uh, Kieran Thompson who recently joined the school in the last couple of years there you go. Well, we're going to hand over now. We're going to have the presentations in a few minutes. It's uh, Hugh Rudden it's representing. Uh, he's an iconic GA official, but I believe he could be uh, he could be representing Crow Park here this afternoon. We're going to have the presentation towards the Gallon captain, 
uh, Conor Grennan, um, obviously, as a, as a biased Offaly man, I will say wish Conor, wish Conor all the best. Congratulations today, and uh, we have high hopes for our under twenty hurlers. And he's a man that uh, could be inv- could be involved this year. He's in the county county under twenty <laughs> hurling panel, so uh, he's coming into some strong company there. So you know, look, there's a, a, a straight away. There's no rest for a lot of these guys. It's straight into big competitions. Uh, it's straight into maybe club football, minor football, and, and into the county. Is that, is, side. That you, is that you telling them there's training now in a couple of nights' time? Yeah, <laughs> tomorrow morning. <laughs> tomorrow morning. There you go. No, but look, it's. Great, it's great for both. As Sean McLaughlin, I talk about the school where our captain, one, he's a credit to the school. He's a head boy in the school. He's captain of the senior team. He never misses training. He's always out trying to improve. So he is. He's, he's a credit to his family, what he does, and how he goes about his business. And he certainly is a leader within the school and within the captain of the team, deservedly captain. Unfortunately, it's not for him lifting the cup today. And and Connor Grennan is Connor Grennan. The possibility the dual player could he do that? Because he can show the work on it. And it shows you the work that's been done and awfully too um, within the schools and it's great to see. Yeah, well, absolutely. Like on both fronts, Offaly schools this year, uh, it was a huge year for Colosh to Cullum getting to a Leinster A final, which is uh, breaking new ground for them. They were very, very close against a good NAS CBS side. And on the hurling front, fantastic year. We had three victories for Offaly schools at B, C, and D. Uh, big wins for Killina, for Cistercian College, Ross Gray, and of course, Banagher College, who uh, possibly an unfortunate suspension of probably their star man, Jane Rigney, in the All Ireland semi final could have led them to be contesting an All Ireland final next week so yeah look there's there's no question things are going better but equally on the Donegal front you'd say like you know because what, what Abby are in an Ireland find this afternoon I've no idea how that one's going yep. by the way but you know it's like historically schools football in Donegal hasn't been strong so results like this are hugely important so schools football in Donegal has not been strong and it's not been strong because of the Ulster colleges and you've got the northern teams um, doing very well the likes of their own and stuff and we feel that we're in the background um, in the back foot with all that there and the schools under schools but we're making our own way and the club getting involved in that Absolutely. So we're we're going to be handing over now in a second. We'll actually, out of curiosity for Donegal, uh, for Donegal uh, li- t- people tuned in, we'll see if we can get an Abbey. We'll see if we can get an Abbey result here, but uh, nothing coming up. Nothing coming up at the moment. But uh, we're going towards. Pass over towards Hugh Rudden here. Look, we'll, we'll we'll wrap it up. We know that one is being streamed elsewhere as well. All we can say is that. Uh, no, no result coming up just yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. But all we can say is to everyone in there, whether you're a supporter of Skullwera Bunkrana, who I can only say my commiserations, which I echo to the team and the players and management, the whole lot, or if you're a supporter of Gallon Community School, let's be honest, like myself, and you're, uh, you know, huge congratulations, fantastic afternoon. If you're a neutral who just tuned in for a game of football, I'll tell you, you got a dramatic, wonderful finish this afternoon. Not free scoring, but I'll tell you, it was no less thrilling and no less engaging for that. I'd like to give my thanks to Gary beside me. I'd like to give my thanks to Rory for uh, all his excellent camera work this afternoon, the professionals masking my amateurism at every turn, and also to Greg back in studio and to Raf for helping out with this stream. We were delighted to have you on board with Stream Sport this afternoon. Equally, uh, my thanks to Masita, uh, who do wonderful sponsorship of the GA's post-primary school competitions. It's great to have them aboard. They're a very, very natural fit for the these competitions, natural fit, sportswear, do you see what I did there? Brilliantly done. Uh, so it's great to have them on board. And overall, thanks to yourself for tuning in. It's been a wonderful afternoon, particularly for Gallon Community School of Fermanagh. Final score here at Markovic Park in Sligo is Gallon Community School. Nine points. Skull were up on Crana, one goal and five. To the two teams who gave us a fantastic hour and whatever entertainment here today, to Kalashur and Kana, hard luck, things didn't go your way, you were only one kick of the ball away from taking it extra time, and whatever could have happened after that. Keep your heads up, guys, you should be proud of your, what you've done for your school, for your club, for your families, and I'm sure we'll see you here more of you in the years to come. So well done, Kalashur. To the Gallant Community School, Rush on Matrimonations. Uh, again, to the, a game that's at different stages, it could have gone anyway. But fair play to Gallant, they've put their heads down, 
They never panicked. They took the scores. They took the opportunities. And right up to the depth, they fought for every ball. Well done, Gavin, and congratulations. You're very worthy champion. Now, before I present the cup, we also have a player of the, a player of the match to present. And I'll ask you to present the Mesita player of the match to Gavin, number 12, uh, Luke Kelly. Thank you to the human family for the presentations. Uh, appreciate if you would keep the feet because we have another game tomorrow and safe journey home to Portings. <laughs>